Hello and welcome to another two minute table talker with the Handring Solar Wine Club, this time on the Fram Sinso 2017. Now to really appreciate this particular wine, I think we need to take a step way back and give you a little bit of history of Sinso in South Africa. Now back in 1900, just after Phylloxera had wiped out the South African wine industry, farmers were very eager to get back on the wagon. They needed to plant vineyards quickly and they needed to start selling grapes. So Sinso was the perfect solution to this problem because it grew quickly and it fruited vigorously and it gave you a great return on your investment, loads of juice for your grapes, which meant that farmers would have a lot of wine to sell in a short space of time. The trouble with this grape is that it tastes exactly as you would expect it to taste given what I've just said. Simple, slightly diluted and lacking complexity, partly because of how quickly everything happens. One gets the feeling that, as a wine, it hasn't quite journeyed far enough from its humble beginnings as grape juice. Like, on its journey to adulthood, to become all aged and mysterious, it kind of never got past adolescence. But it certainly did do the trick of getting the South African wine industry back on track. And there was a point, in fact, where we had what was called a wine lake, which is just excessive amounts of Sinso wine that people then desperately tried to flog. But in the 50s and 60s, something magical started to happen. There was the Cool Kid International cultivar that had arrived in South Africa, Cabernet Sauvignon. And it was, in true New World fashion, big and brash and bold and not particularly refined. But we had loads of older vines and so's that were producing lighter, floral, quite silky wines. And so winemakers started blending these two grapes and creating these cult Cabernet Sauvignon Cinso blends that were famous all over the world in this kind of legendary golden era before we then plowed into sanctions and apartheid. Of course, now in the last five years or so, these Cabernet Sauvignon Cinso blends have been making a little bit of a resurgence because some very clever wine critics unearthed some 40 or 50 year old bottles of Cabernet Cinso and said, holy buck monkey, Batman, these wines can age, which of course then triggered a whole resurgence and interest in Cinso as a grape. And I think a lot of winemakers thought to themselves, well, perhaps now is time for Cinso to be in the limelight as a single cultivar wine as well. Of course, informing this thought was the fact that, as mentioned, South Africa had some very old Cinso vines. In fact, the oldest red grape block in the entire country is a Cinso block in Wellington, which is 120 years old. And you might say, well, what difference does it make if the vines are old? Well, Cinso as a grape lacks complexity and lacks concentration. Old vines happen to deliver both increased complexity and increased concentration. So Cinso and old vines are an incredibly happy marriage that results in wines that are far better than perhaps Cinso should be. This would in part explain why recently Decanter did a blind tasting of 30 or 40 Cinsos and seven of the top 10 Cinsos came from South Africa. And this all brings us to Tinus Kruger's Fram Cinso 2017. This little patch of Cinso vines is grown in red sandstone at about 500 meters above sea level in Clan William in Citrusdale Mountains. And you might ask, what is the significance of the 500 meters above sea level? Well, if you think about Helswerchter, where places like Tokara and Talima are, that's about 450 meters above sea level. So 500 meters is even higher than that. And what altitude does is it usually increases diurnal range, the temperature between day and night. And this is important because at night, it allows the sugar ripening to slow down as it gets really cool, but it lets phenolic ripening keep on going. So you can have a much longer ripening time, which allows for more complicated aromas and flavors. Again, this is exactly what Cinso lacks, complexity. So what we have is also the fact that this wine is harvested from bush vines. So you've got old bush vines at altitude, means that a grape that is usually dilute and simple is now concentrated and complex. I mean, there's very little more that you need to know about this wine, but I do want to say this. If you've been paying attention at all to the wine fashion police, you will no doubt have heard that there's the trend towards lighter reds. I just want to say that the framework for assessing quality doesn't change. Now, a wine doesn't need to be powerful or concentrated in order to be a great wine, but if it's going to be light, then it needs to replace those quality markers of power or concentration with other elements. It must have explosive aromatic qualities or beautiful acidity or incredible length. So even if the wine is light and feels like vapor on the tongue, you're still getting waves of cherries and florals and herbs and chalk dust and small forest creatures 
long after you've swallowed. Now, I think the Sinso from Tinus Kruger does exactly that. But I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. So leave a review at the bottom of the Wine Info video page on the Hand Drink Solo website. And if you have any questions about Sinso as a grape or about the winemaking or about Tinus Kruger, I will do my best to answer them. Or you can just leave a list of your favorite Sinso's on the site so that other members can go and hunt those same wines and share your joy.